Hello. Okay. So we have three topics rolled into one today, this week. First, I wanted to talk about the sister who sent me a text message saying that she wanted to bring me by a very special invitation. I wonder what that could be. And I thought our conversation and visit might be worth recording. And this got me to thinking about all of the different types of activism that we have, which really got me to thinking about all the people and platforms that helped on my journey to fully waking up. So let's roll all these bad boys into one. Let's do it. So you have all heard me on many occasions state that I have nothing against the Jehovah's Witnesses themselves, just the organization because the people themselves are really nice people. I just find it really irritating when people just make this sweeping statement, oh, Jehovah's Witnesses are nice people. No, they're not nice people. Okay, well, the ones I know are really nice. You've got your number of uh, people that uh, are nice, and um, you've got your miserable ones, you've got your judgmental ones. Vicky, don't make me call the cops on you. No, they're just people, like everybody else. Okay, I get it, I get it. I love you, Vicky. You do great content, but I have to tell you now I second guess myself every time I say people are nice people. So you taught an old dog new tricks. Anyhow, I do allow the witnesses to come to my home. I've always enjoyed talking to anyone about their beliefs. I will have to say that now my approach is a little bit different because I am no longer okay with them spreading the word. But I also let them come over because the reality is I have no friends. And clearly I like to talk. And if there is one thing that Jehovah's Witnesses do really, really well when they think you might go to the meeting, they listen. Okay, so this sister asked if she could bring me my special invitation. And we all know the event that's coming up. And for those of you who don't know what the memorial is, what is it? a commemoration of the death of Jesus Christ. To remember what he did in giving his life for us. Where and when? See inside for the date, time, and location. Ah, this is really interesting here. There is no admittance fee and no collections will be taken. That'd be a first. So the memorial is a sacred event to the Jehovah's Witnesses. It is their only event. And in taking from the scriptures, they, the night of the Last Supper, when Jesus passed around the bread and the wine, and he said, do this in remembrance of me, they pass around wine and bread after a very long talk. Always a talk. And some sisters make unleavened bread, which basically means it has no yeast in it. It's pretty gross. And you have your aisles in the kingdom hall and an elder, well, and ministerial servants, I suppose. In any case, a dude, always a man. Females are not allowed to do this. Surprise, surprise. They take the glass of wine at the beginning of the aisle and they pass it to the first person who passes it to the next person, to the next person, to the next person. Everybody holds and touches the wine if it's a child. They help the child so the child can touch the wine. If it's a baby, they might touch the baby's hands to it. And it makes its way to the end of the aisle. They go up the next row and pass it this way and on and on. And then they do it with the, the unleavened bread. So this is the memorial for Jehovah's Witnesses and it is the biggest event of the year. I've been told there's some 20 million attending, anticipated attending this year. So, the sister that I allow to come to my house, I thought this would be a very good time to discuss some of the policy changes. My plan was, I had a plan, was to explain to her that I would not be attending this year because I am very concerned and disturbed by a lot of the policy changes, in which case she would ask, what policy changes? And I figured we would have a good discussion that would be worth recording. It didn't turn out quite that way. So essentially, when I talk to witnesses, I listen to them because I want them to listen to me. 
depending on the witness and to be honest their age group their gender sometimes their understanding of the english language sometimes whether or not they're related to me i definitely have different approaches um, the way that i have been dealing with this woman is i guess somewhat being naive okay they taught me to be manipulative it's not like i'm never going to use that skill but I am somewhat naive and I ask a lot of questions in the hopes that she can try to give me the answers and then I might share information that I know of that usually causes her to be a little confused or she'll give me their pat answer which I'm already anticipating. This conversation did not go as smoothly as I had hoped. I was very aware of the microphone being on. I was very nervous they would see it. I was very worried i would say too much because i do not want to chase her away that is not my goal i want to give information and hope that people will think now i will tell you that i did not intend for a very long time to ever mention the shepherd the flock of god secret elders manual by stating that you can assume i failed so my conversation isn't the most impressive. It's the first time I've recorded myself talking with someone and I think that made me very nervous. I'm hoping it's like sex and it gets better the more you do it. So when she came by, I was out actually in my garage, which is where I do all of my schoolwork, my life work, you know, my budgeting, my paying my bills, shoot these videos, etc. So when she came in, the first thing she noticed was my backdrop and a little bit of lighting set up. And of course, wanted to know what that was all about. Do you do photography too? No, I do um, just little videos here and there for like survivors of abuse and things like that for some groups. So. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I, well, that's cool. That's terrible, but that's yeah. cool. <laughs> like, what do I Isn't say? that it's cool? <laughs> And that's usually what I tell people when I don't want them to know about my activism, which would be uh, family members that are physically out but still very mentally in. Uh, the same goes with friends and definitely my mother. Uh, I just make some videos here and there on YouTube, just kind of a small community of people, you know, survivors of abuse. And it's usually left at that. And then at one point, my daughter came home, enters through the garage, and um, this portion's not significant, but I found it amusing. After they introduced themselves and the formality, I don't think you can hear my daughter well on the recording, but she looks awkwardly around and goes, so what's going on here? I wasn't kidding when I said I don't have friends. She was a little suspicious. Well, let's play the recording. Nice to meet you, Sarah. Nice to meet you guys. They're trying to brainwash me to going to the memorial. <laughs> to a what? To Grandma's church. Oh, no, the Jehovah's Witnesses. They're coming by. You know how Grandma has the memorial every yeah. year? Yeah. So after that, conversation ensued, and it was literally 50 minutes of catching up. And as I said, I hadn't planned on mentioning the Elder's Manual, but I jumped the gun a little bit. Show me the magic. What the hell was that? I'm showing you the magic. I no, I said come 90 and then I come 10. You don't go the whole 100. My mouth was open, Albert. Oh, you over eager son of a... So finally, 50 minutes later, I found some opportunity to ask some questions and to express some of my concerns. Uh, so yeah, if, this so weekend, I would, if you wanted to come this weekend, come in the afternoon. And I can just send you. I'll send oh, you. Oh, what do they have? Oh, so it's an all day, right? Goes from like 9.55 to 3.55, so I the, think. I don't, yeah, I'm so confused. So many things have changed. Like, I, like the 144,000 is not closed up anymore. Like, people can still be anointed now. Yeah. Like, that would trip me out if I saw a young person drink some wine. I'd be like smacking that out of their hand and be like, get the, get out of here. You're lying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah, know what no. you're thinking. There is a lot of... We were talking about that on the way over. I said, you know, Cass and I, because she's a lot younger than me, so push her out of here. <laughs> and sure, the same age. I think you're 43, right? 44-ish. Yeah. Uh, yes, she's older than me. Yeah, I'm 43. My husband's 46. Yes, that's real. I know that already. I already know that. I could have told you that before I got her. Um, but I was telling her, like, in the 80s, it was just different, you know? And Jehovah's organization was different. And it was hard. Core. 
in it was very very hardcore and this is something that they frequently say when it was the 60s they talked about how hard and different it was in the 40s in 2030 they're going to be talking about how different the organization and how much the organization has changed from 2019 so this is very common for them to kind of foo-foo their their policies that have changed or for anyone who might share their nightmare experiences as a former Jehovah's Witness, they'll always explain how it used to be so hardcore and it's so different now. I mean, I know that there's still a lot of the same policies and a lot of still things still in place. But despite that, I still wanted to steer her back around to there are policies that are still in place. Even if they want to ignore the whole generation that will never die, then let's just focus on the policies that are still in place that they will never change. But I know that they still have a lot of policies that I don't necessarily agree with. Um, and that I know they'll never change. They'll never change the two witness rule. That'll just never happen. They said they would never change it. And that's just so bothersome. And then like, yeah, the I saw a young person. So I did bring up the overlapping generation a little bit. I forgot about that. I was all over the place. It was my first time recording. Tell me you weren't nervous the first time you did it on camera. I saw once in my life, it was such a huge big deal. Somebody was visiting or, but he was of the anointed. And you know, you're trying not to look. And my mom was like, no, everybody wants to look. And she's like, don't look. You like when they're passing around the wine. And it's like, it was a really, really big freaking deal, you know? And cause he was, like a hundred and two. Like, oh well, maybe because he's old. But well, everybody was maybe though. He's still breathing. Because everybody was because the generation from 1914, that the end would come before they died, and so everybody was aging out, and so it's like, yeah, it was it was like a really big deal, and I remember wanting to look, but being like, I don't really care, but I really wanted to look. Like, it did suddenly get really quiet the more I spoke. So yeah, that that kind of blew my mind. That I don't know a lot about it. Um, would you consider studying with me? The classic, would you consider studying with me? Well, as you guys know, I have no problem talking to anyone. We'll see. Um, maybe more as summer approaches. Okay. I have more free time. Um, I mean, I know, like I said, there's a lot of things that I already am aware of mm -hmm. and I already know, but I know there's things, like I said, that they're not going to change. Um, And just, I think, and then, and they really should. I mean, honestly, they would really retain more members if they would change some of their policies, like the two witness rule, where. And and I think eventually they will. I don't know if you heard what happened at the uh, Australia Royal Commission, 2015, and it wasn't just Jehovah's Witnesses. They were evaluating all the churches, and I'm I don't know if the Catholics triggered this or what, but because they're always getting in trouble for child abuse. It's if there's any Catholics out there, sorry if I threw you guys under the bus. It was the only segue I could think of at the time. But Australia was like, we need to look at internal policies of all of the churches. And Jehovah's Witnesses were deemed one of the worst. And there's like a thousand six cases that were never reported to the authorities. And all these kids are like, how come nobody will speak up for us? Nobody will say anything. So like in my cases, which was three different congregations, um, yeah, one of my abusers got disfellowship because I had witnesses, which were the other kids that were being raped and molested. But they still never reported it to the authorities because they don't want, I, you know, and so... That one, I, um, because I think actually significant things have changed. Uh, and I know that because Jeremiah, you know, he's an elder. Yeah. Um, and in fact, we just had a recent, unfortunately, um, he was somebody that had come into the truth very recently right, and right. scary um, and it it was handled very directly like yeah. and uh, to you know very much protection out of for the person that for the I mean child. do they let people in the in the hall know now absolutely absolutely there's difference between gossip getting around and people finding out that someone might be a pedophile as opposed to them directly announcing it and saying this is not gossip. I specifically asked her if they informed the congregation and she said yes. If any of you have ever, ever heard 
a name announced up on the stage, deeming someone a pedophile, please let me know down in the comments because I think it'd be a first for all of us. It is, there is procedure, like the procedure is so strict. <coughs> if somebody comes forward, if you know, a child comes right. forward, um, whoever they come forward to, and an elder has wind of it, they have exact policy that they have to follow. They have to go absolutely alert the authorities immediately. It doesn't take two witnesses. They mm -hmm. alert the authorities because they, it's up to the authorities to determine if they're guilty or not, right? If that person is, um, we're not, we're not here to convict them of right. a crime. Right. So they have to go to a uh, phone. They find a, a phone where they can call anonymously and say this person has been reported right. to have, and they immediately do it. And I know this because Jeremiah's had to do it. <laughs> right. Um, they have to report it immediately. And then separate from that is, is the walkthrough on the, you know. I feel so bad every time she mentions her husband's name because I really truly do like this woman which is exactly why I want her to have the accurate information. Maybe somewhere, sometime, something will stick. And they'll often follow what is done by the courts. They'll why do they what... do it anonymously, do you think? Because, they, because of the protection for uh, whatever the, there's a law, and it's different by state. It is different by state. Yeah. I mean, I think... And I don't, I'm not I know, super versed on it. I, neither am I. I know some of the, because I obviously, I grew up around witnesses, so I know a lot of ex Jehovah's Witnesses. And I know it's different in state. I know some states it's mandated, therefore they do report it. In other states, if it's not mandated, it's not reported. So, and I don't know what Idaho. I, I think if, if Idaho and I will is. make this as a general statement, is if you look at where society has, you know, for a long time, society mm -hmm. didn't handle any right. kind of abuse, kind of whether it yeah. was, you know, a, a woman, you'd look at the Me Too movement, hashtag, that was not handled well. Child abuse, and I'm, this is not excusing right. how it was yeah. handled, but I think that as a general rule, society didn't handle it well. This is where I was shaking my head because I wasn't buying it. And then she says, well, I'm not making excuses. Well, yeah, you kind of are. And I know that's because that's what she is programmed to do. So I, I don't hold that against her. The policies, I think you'd actually be very refreshed. I'd, to have, to, I'd have to look them up because I know, I know that the elders have a manual that they have to go by. And it's very strict. So I thought it was interesting that she acknowledged it. It's very strict. Now, I don't know because at this point, everybody was doing kind of a lot of nodding because it was getting very uncomfortable. Or if she in general knows that there's a manual they follow just as anyone would have guidelines. But of course, no, she's never seen it. Very like, right. no interpretation, not your personal opinion. Do you like that person? But I think it's... even in that manual, it says that if someone has ever abused a child, that it could take a couple of years, but they can still become an elder again. Oh no. Uh, oh no. no. It says that in their manual. No. Uh-uh. Absolutely not. It doesn't. That's something maybe on the internet somebody's published. No, it's just like the actual elder's manual itself. No. There was no way in hell I was going to tell her I got it off the internet. If you've seen a copy of Shepherd the Flock of God, it's a legitimate publication from the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. And yeah, if it comes down to it, I'll lie. I'll tell them I got it from a former elder friend. You know, theocratic warfare. They've been very, very strict about like if somebody were to come back into the congregation, right, that has had those charges against them. Like they, they can't, can't go to the bathroom ever. alone, they can't yeah. serve, they can't go to nope. the bathroom. Do you guys think alone. that maybe just is local to yourselves? No, no. So. It's policy, international policy. It's, yeah, because I, I know people that have been elders and who've had the manual, and it's. It's, I would say, the last I mean, that's the, the I changes the, that have been. Made I would in say the, the, the verbiage. Years, maybe 15 years. No, I, I think this is recent. The verbiage is like. Because I'm thinking, you know, like when I was you know, in trouble for smoking a cigarette, I was like, I just have body odor, really. <laughs> but that they, if they do a serious infraction or a, I can't think of what the term is, but that the example that was used was, for example, if someone had found out that they had child, sexual child abuse, that it would be many, many years, if ever, it does say the words, if ever, like, it's not likely, but it does say it will be many, many years, if ever, until he can become an elder again. That freaks me out. I, I, I'll confirm. Yeah, it's a, no, they cannot. They cannot serve. In fact, there was an elder. Um, well, your that, husband's an elder. I mean, mm -hmm. you can look at his book. Yeah, I'll ask him about it. Yeah. Ask him. If the, yeah, I'm uh, almost 100% positive they can never serve again. I, I sh I'll ask Dan, too. Yeah. Dan, actually, my yeah. father-in-law goes to the prison, actually, a lot. So. so she's going to ask her husband if she could take a look at his manual 
and um, the other sister with her will be asking her father-in-law. Yeah. So I'm just going to leave it at that. That's about where it kind of trailed off. Um, there was a lot of uncomfortableness, but... So I thought there were some things in there I did well and some things I could have done better. I got to say a little bit of what I wanted to say. As an update, she did text me the next morning and told me that she had a, a talk with her husband about the two witness rule and had some really good information about it. So enough about that. That was my invitation. It is official. I wonder if they can revoke my invitation if they don't revoke the physical invitation. So we all have different deliveries and different styles when it comes to activism. I think some of us get involved in the work to help others. Some get involved to help ourselves. And sometimes it's a little bit of both. Both are equally as important. And the different deliveries that are out there, the different styles, the different personalities are just as important. Every single one of them. And here's why. I would say I had been 75% awake for about 25 years. It might have been 50%. I still haven't narrowed it down. In any case, I was not fully awake, although I had been out. Although there were a great many policies, beliefs. I, I probably actually blame the congregation more than anybody. I'd be like, they're processing what the governing body is saying incorrectly. Now, at the time, I didn't even know this community existed. I'm not naive, but I was also very unfamiliar with YouTube. In any case, I was scrolling through some videos and a video popped up like an ex-Bethelite tells all. I didn't click on it right away, but when I finally did, the only reason I was comfortable clicking on it, even as someone who had been out for 25 years, is because of the way they were dressed. This is Daniel. This is Lady C. This is JT. God bless. Take care. Take we'll see care. you on the next video. How they dressed mattered because they dressed like Jehovah's Witnesses. And that was comforting to me. And it felt safe. And I was nosy. And so I watched this first video with my jaw on the ground the entire time. But because of his language, his presentation, his tone, all these things I had learned to trust while I was in the organization made it easy for me to trust him now. And I could hear his message. If I had seen someone like me on YouTube, I would have clicked off immediately, as I'm sure many have. But that's the important part. My videos are not presented for people who are at the place I was at. And while I do talk a lot to people who are studying, and I would love to reach people that are currently in, I know my content and style is better suited for people who are already out, can laugh at themselves and at our situation, and take the occasional dick joke. In any case, I stayed with XJW Critical Thought for a long time. I watched quite a few of their videos. I would see other suggestions, I'd click on them, and it was like, oh yeah, that's an apostate. Those are apostates. <laughs> but not JT, Lady C, and Daniel. No, no, they were safe. And there was a slew of other people I was comfortable with watching. There's so many of them, I can't even, I can't even tell you who they were. Some of them I now know who they were, but it was just a blur but I stayed with people that I was safe and comfortable with. Like a good Jehovah's Witness girl. Some of the stuff I saw terrified me, like literally made my stomach drop. Friends I haven't spoke to in years, to the parents that shun me because I'm no longer one of you, to the governing body that's covering up child sex abuse. We're asking you to this goes out to you. I must have ranted to my husband on just that video alone for weeks. Car crashes, hall crashes, picketing. This shit still terrified me. I could not watch it. I could not watch what these people were doing. I think I may have even put comments 
below the videos in how you're just driving people deeper into their fear of persecution. And I don't take that back. That can't happen. Um, but spoiler alert, I feel a little bit differently about it now. These other videos basically represented to me everything that we were told apostates were. And even as someone who was out, all I could think is this is the worst thing you could possibly do. You are helping no one. And then I would run back to the safety of JT and Lady C. And eventually I ran into John Cedars. Hello there. Hello there. Hello there. And he wasn't wearing a suit. So I really couldn't listen to him. But because I had already heard the message quite a few times through other former witnesses that I had learned to trust, it was easier for me to hear his message and the things he needed to say. And it wasn't long after that that I finally purchased Crisis of Conscience. And that blew me away. And there was a few things in Crisis that really hit home for me. Uh, way too many things to go into detail here, but I'm telling you, I keep running into people who've never heard of the book. You've got to read the book. It is worth reading. It will touch you. You will relate to it. You will hear stories that validate things that you thought for years. And what finally did it for me was this thumbnail. XJW Anointed. Did you see how old this guy is? In case you don't know why this hit me so hard, I'm going to give you a quick crash course into the anointed. The anointed are 144,000 that will go to heaven. The rest of us who survive, our, our reward is an earthly reward in paradise here on earth, which we will build over the corpses of our friends and family who decided to not be Jehovah's Witnesses. The very, very short version is that the end of the world will come before the last anointed here on earth dies. And the anointed had to have been alive in 1914. This was some new light before this new light, which was different than the old light and the light before that because it kind of kept changing. To be alive or born in 1914, you would currently be 104. I don't know what kind of moisturizer this guy's using, but he's still not close to 104. And when I watched his video, it sealed everything. I'd heard policy changes. I believed in new light, some new light. But this teaching is one that we lived and died for. And it had changed. And it was all I needed. That was it. I had no questions, nothing. It was over. And that's when I realized I'd been mentally in since I was 17 years old, but that this wasn't the truth. Yeah, it still pisses me off. However, even then I was very opposed to some forms of activism. And then I saw Spoon Fed No More's video, this one. Hello there, this is Rebecca at Spoon Fed No More. We're here. And uh, even though it's rainy, they've turned on the sprinklers here in order to keep us out. We got everyone over here. Beauty, look at that. I was like, oh my God, this girl's a little crazy. This is helping no one. I don't know what she's trying to accomplish. Of course, my feelings on that would also change. And the more you know, the more you grow. And almost any time anyone confronted any witness, I still couldn't, I couldn't stomach it. I was like, what the, what are you doing? And then I ran into Candace Lambert. Yeah, you do everything the governing body says. No, 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 everything they say is Baba Bay. For no, it's example, not. Did you know that they are hiding a list of 24,000 pedophiles right now and paying $4,000 a day so you don't find out about it? And this woman has the sweetest, most Southern voice. And when she's telling Jehovah's Witnesses how wrong they are, she's so kind about it. I'm doing a terrible impression right now. And then I found humor right up my alley. So the Jehovah Witnesses believe in a God named Jehovah. 
and I really wish I could just one day just sit back and have a conversation with him. Ask and you shall receive, oh my, my son. Oh my God. Yes. You're gorgeous. Thank you. And he super put me at ease. He reminded me to do what I always do with tragedy. Laugh inappropriately, process, and then laugh appropriately. There are still to this day methods that I cannot stand by. Um, please stop bullying 65 year old men or women screaming in their face everything that you ever learned, puking it all at them all at once, name calling, insulting race, insulting intelligence, as if you were never in the cult, or speaking loudly and directly into the face of someone who clearly English is not their first language. Come on, pick on somebody your own age. And if you're going to spew insults, give the non-English speaker a chance to process and reply. There's bullying and there's activism. There's a difference. You know the difference. And that's all I'm gonna say on the matter. I will say in general, hall crashes and car crashes still freak me out. I would bitch about them constantly. Even thinking back now, I couldn't tell you why they bothered me. They just did. But then I met Vicky and she was doing what she called a leaflet drop. She's pleasant, but assertive, very sweet, very bold. If you haven't caught her latest video. Right, so the names that I'm calling you is a paedophile protecting cult because you over yes. many years, Please I'm talking quiet. to Rob, no I don't need to be quiet, over the years thousands and thousands of people have been molested in this organisation. Well, she's got a great accent. So her video was on doing a leaflet drop. I asked her what is a leaflet drop and she explained that she distributed good old fashioned Jehovah's Witness style. These leaflets that she had printed up disputing Watchtower Bible and Tract Society teachings and slipping them into the doors of people's homes and handing them out to the community. Well, that was something I could get behind. But if you had asked me a month earlier if that was okay to me, I'd probably have said no. But this is the process. Different people and their different personalities were effective to me at various stages of my growth. What one could not have done for me at step one, thank God they were there at step seven. And those that I couldn't listen to at step two pushed me along at step eight, nine, and ten. What offended me at step three, some of my favorite videos to watch now. And eventually I saw Spoon Fed No More's video talking about how she had been disfellowshipped, attempted reinstatement, etc and requesting her letters from her congregation. And going through that experience with her and the pain that she had experienced completely helped me identify with the first video of hers that I had seen where I thought she was a little out there. And I saw how passionate and articulate and intentful she was and also hurting. And suddenly I felt this woman can do any damn thing that she wants to do. She deserves it. And then I saw the W5, I don't know if it's considered a documentary or just an investigative piece, but I really got to see behind the scenes into the hearts of some of these people who were doing activities that I previously deemed inappropriate. I saw the heart that they were putting into it. And I saw how they struggled, even with their own activism, in picketing, in doing crashes, but they still did it because they understood the importance of it. And they didn't want anyone being left to feel the way they felt. Then I saw the crash in Arizona. Now I can't remember, I think it was Scottsdale. I can't remember if it's Prescott. Scottsdale, I think. And I was like, hell yeah. I didn't blink an eye. In fact, at that point I was applauding. Like I got it. It may not be a route that I would take, but I got it. And then I saw another crash and another. Cart crashes, hall crashes, assembly crashes, all these very, very little successes. And I did see how it can impact 
the people on the receiving end. But I also saw the value that it added to the individual activists. And as I said at the beginning of my video, sometimes we participate in activism because we want to help others. And sometimes we have to participate in activism because it helps ourselves. Both are equally as important. But I think at the heart of everyone out there who has good intent is the strong desire for no one out there to feel the way we have felt. By far, the one guy who sealed the deal for me on car crashes is this guy. No, I mean this guy. Jude 3. I use the Spicoli reference because there is something about Jude's approach that reminds me so much of my surfer dude uncles in California. He's very laid back, likable, he has a lot of energy, and he absolutely ranks in my top three apostates to watch. His approach is so genuine. All right, welcome to Santa Monica. Let's do it. Hello. How are you? Hello. Nice to see you. How are you today? Oh, okay. You have to go right on. To ministry. My name is Jude. Jude, Anthony. Anthony, it's nice to meet you, nice man. Nice to meet you. Quick question for you. Okay. And he knows better than to vomit everything he knows on a person all at once. I'm still working on that. But he listens. He actually listens to the witnesses he's speaking to in order to have a real conversation with them. He gives them the respect that he hopes to receive. This is why I question if he was ever really a witness because, you know, they don't do that. And he's very knowledgeable. I'm like, you know that scripture where they talked about that thing where we're not supposed to do that one thing like in the Old Testament, but then like something happened and then they changed it? Yeah, that scripture. Jude be like. He said, ask me the nations for your inheritance and you shall have it. And then in Matthew 28, Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And it's a beautiful thing to watch. But simultaneously, he's also direct. I don't know if you've seen the lawsuit in Canada right now for $66 million. Against Jehovah's Witnesses? I have not. I haven't. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only reason I'm asking is because in Montana, mm -hmm. you guys were sued for $35 million. And I'm seeing, like, you know, typically I, I see Jehovah's Witnesses. And I don't feel that seeds are planted by the time he's done. They're watered. And again, not everyone takes this approach. But to me, it's the best I've seen. Wow. I think I've managed to make a video so far without any dildos or inappropriate hand-to-mouth gestures. My point is, each of us has to do what we're motivated to do, and this serves two purposes. A, obviously spreading the word and saving lives, and B, healing ourselves. For some, that means making videos. Some of us are storytellers. Others disseminate the latest news, literature leaks, and policy changes. Where would we be without our fingers on those pulses? Some help us heal with comedy or singing praises in a different way. For some, it means writing music and creating apostate anthems. For some, it's unwitnessing at the carts and still others head right into the hall. And for others, it's taking that forbidden drink at the memorial. I notice he bypassed the unleavened bread. I've said it before and I'm going to reiterate it again. With little exception, try not to bully, every single method of activism is helping someone somewhere along the way in their path. So with little exception, there's no right way or wrong way. Every way is essential and everyone receives information differently and you never know which one of us is going to be just that right messenger. So could I crash a hall? No, but it's in the right for those who do. Is it too aggressive? Maybe, but if you're brainwashed aggressively, you're likely going to retaliate in the same way. And frankly, if I had been held hostage for years, raped repeatedly, if I lost families due to a twisted blood transfusion policy, that could change at any time. If I lost friends to suicide, 
due to shunning. If the one thing that helped me heal from that was to stand and speak my truth, I think I'd be pretty entitled to do so. Again, could I do it? No, I'm a chicken. But I also said I would never make videos about Jehovah's Witnesses either. Plus, I just couldn't crash a hall in Boise. The people here are just really nice. So all this niceness is just a guise. But they really are nice here. No, they're not nice people. So with the upcoming memorial, this is a really big week for Jehovah's Witnesses. And I would say also for a lot of ex-Jehovah's Witnesses. For me, it's been a time to reflect on how I fully woke and somehow ended up where I am now. And it's been a blur, but it's also been so clear. So I wanted to say to all of you out there with your different styles, your different voices, your different ways of presenting information, sharing your experiences, although we have never met, you all have done more for me than I could ever express. So thank you. And in the hopes that I can reach a handful of people in the same way you have all touched me, I do have some really great things coming up. It's possible I might have convinced my husband to review Shepherd the Flock of God with me. It might have been the section on porn. You don't want to miss that. And whatever it is that you plan to do this week, whether it's attending the memorial, not attending the memorial, possibly crashing a memorial, or celebrating in your own way at home, whatever you're doing, enjoy your newfound freedom. And until then, I'll see you next time.